What's going on with potential energy? Well, we've always said to you that if you lift an object up, you're giving it potential energy, right? With respect to gravity. So potential energy is the energy that an object has as a result of its position or state. There's the definition, obviously, which you've got to learn. You did it in grade 10, so it's nothing new to you. It basically means if you've got a mass like this, you can see on the right-hand side at the bottom here, there's a mass. It's been lifted up. Let's say it's been lifted up a certain height, H. Obviously, you would have had to do some work to lift it up. How do we know that? Well, the definition of work is you apply force over a certain distance. The distance in this case is H. What's the force that you need to lift an object? Well, let's talk about what's the minimum force you need to lift an object. It's weight. If your weight, the force that you exert is equal to its weight, you only need a force bigger than its weight for a fraction of a second to accelerate it. Then you can drop the force that you're exerting back to the same as the weight, and it would carry on moving with constant velocity. Right? Nice and slowly, so you can lift it over any height. But let's say you've moved it over height h using a force fg. How much work have you done? Um, the energy transferred is obviously going to be equal to the work that's done, because energy and work are kind of two sides of the same coin. Are you not going to follow along? Oh, you are. I'll catch it. Okay. So, um, now, the work formula is what? what? Force times displacement. If you're going in the same direction, you don't have to worry about cos theta, because cos theta is going to be 1. So the work done is just going to be F delta X cos theta, but if you're lifting the force, and the, if the force is in the same direction as the height, then cos theta will be 1. So it's just going to be F delta X. But now you know that the force is equal to the weight, and that's equal to mg. So instead of writing F delta X, you can write mg delta X. So that's only up and down. Yeah. So you can just write mg delta X. But you know in this case that delta X, the distance you're moving, is actually the height. So it becomes mg h. Remember that from grade 10? You should all be going, oh, yeah, of course. That's the potential energy formula. All right. And that's where it comes from. It comes directly from the definition, applying the definition of work to this scenario. Yes. No, because it's gravitational potential. Remember, there's lots of different types of potential. Yeah. Just to accelerate it. No. Because remember, Newton's second, uh, first law says object will continue moving in the direction of constant velocity if unless the forces are unbalanced. So if it's got balanced forces, it'll move with constant velocity. Yeah, but you and gravity are equal. So it's balanced forces. All right. So H is the vertical displacement, um, and that's potential um, energy formula. Now, let's just say and talk about lifting an object for a little bit. If you've got a lifting force applied to an object, and you've got the force of gravity on it, let's say your lifting force is lower than the force of gravity. What's the object going to do? Go down is too vague. Describe the motion or not. It's going to accelerate down. Thank you. Because it's got an unbalanced force down. You agree? Yeah. If the forces are, if the upwards force is bigger than gravity, accelerate upwards. If the forces are equal, it can be either stationary or moving up or down with constant velocity. You agree? Good. So here you're going to have acceleration down. Here you're going to have acceleration up. This force is supposed to be bigger than that one. I don't know if I drew that bigger. Did I draw it bigger? This one on the left. Is it? So I'll make this a bit smaller. Okay. That force, if that force is smaller, then it will accelerate down. But if the upwards force is bigger, it will accelerate up. If the forces are the same, it can either be at rest or moving with uniform velocity. All right? That's just Newton's first law.
Now, that's just something to remember as we go through. Now, um, let's say you lift the object up to a height h, and then it drops down a certain little distance x. Okay? It drops down to a height x. It drops down a distance x, sorry, to a height h prime. So h prime will be h minus x. You agree? This height is now h minus that amount. Good. So what's the energy going to be at point x? Well, you know the maximum energy was the potential energy up there. Now you should remember that you did this in grade 10. So this is a revision of grade 10 work. Mechanical energy. What's mechanical energy again? Movement energy. Um, not just movement energy. Kinetic is movement. Both. It's potential plus kinetic. So the mechanical energy um, is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. Now, at this point, if you raise it up to a point and now you drop it, all the energy it's got was original potential was originally potential energy. So at any point along the height, if you ignore friction, then its total energy has to be the same as it originally was, because energy is not going to be created or destroyed. So the kinetic plus the potential must equal the original potential, which is what we're doing here. It's kinetic energy at that point plus its potential at that point, which is mgh, but except h is now this height, must be equal to the original height. All right? And so if you wanted to, you could actually solve that equation for x, but you don't necessarily have to. You just have to remember that the whole thing about um, mechanical energy you did in grade 10, you still, we still expect you to know it. So the height, at, the energy at any point is equal to the original energy, which was all potential. All happy with that? At the bottom, all the potential is lost, and the kinetic energy will finally now be equal to the original potential energy. Yeah? Okay. Um, all right, this bouncing ball business we're gonna, I'm going to ignore. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a, it's a nice little thing to sort of think about, but I'm going to ignore it. We don't really need it. Uh, it was an opportunity to practice scientific method. I'm going to skip it and just move straight on to this. This is again, this slide comes straight out of grade 10. So it's an application of the um, mechanical energy story. Let's say you've got a four kilogram ball, you just put some numbers to it, and it's got a, you lift it up a height of eight meters. What's its potential energy at that point? Potential. Round it off, use 10 instead of 9.8. What's potential energy if you lift a four kilogram object up a height eight meters? 40 times eight. Four eight, so? 32. 320 joules. So up there, you're now going to have 320 joules because 4 kilograms times 10, if you use 10 as G times 8, usually 320. But your kinetic energy is going to be zero if it's standing still. If you then drop it, as it falls, it loses potential and it gains kinetic. So halfway down at a height of four meters, it's going to be four, the potential is going to be four meters times four times 10. Four times four is 16, times 10, 160. And now you've only got 160 joules of potential energy. Therefore, you must have 160 joules of kinetic energy because all the potential you've lost has become kinetic. Halfway down. Then if it continues to fall at the bottom, all the potential will be lost because the height is now zero. And all the potential that you had up here, 320, has now become kinetic. So the potential has just worked from maximum through to minimum. 
and all the potential energy has become kinetic energy. Now I used to write the formula like this. Potential at the top is equal to kinetic at the bottom. They prefer you to write it slightly differently. Um, they prefer you to write it as the total mechanical energy at the top is equal to the total mechanical energy at the bottom. So potential plus kinetic at the top is equal to potential plus kinetic at the bottom. Kinetic is not at the top, so it disappears. Potential is not at the bottom, so it disappears. You're left with potential at the top is equal to kinetic at the bottom. All right? Don't write down the potential is equal to the kinetic. Because that's not true, is it? Is the potential equal to the kinetic? No. no. It's only actually true at one point in the middle. Okay? Over here, potential is 320, kinetic is zero. Over here, other way around. So you can't just say potential energy is equal to kinetic energy. That's wrong. Potential at the top is equal to kinetic at the bottom. Okay, that's acceptable. Happy? And here I've just said it in words. There it's in pictures. Here I said words. At any time, the sum of these two, which is called the mechanical energy, stays constant. That's the conservation of mechanical energy principle. That's just a revision, revision of grade 10. We're just setting up the scene so that we can get into some grade 12 size problems. Okay, can I move? Good. There we go. Huh. Work energy theorem. Now, let's say we've got an object um, and we let it fall down a certain height. Okay? Um, it doesn't only apply to that situation. Um, the work energy theorem applies to a number of different situations. The change in the object's um, energy we've just discussed, it turns out that the work done on the object by a net force is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy. And that applies in almost all scenarios. So that's a theorem. We don't prove it to you. I don't have to go and prove it to you. You just need to learn it, understand it. You don't even have to understand it, to be honest, and be able to apply it. That's the most important thing. We're going to use this to solve problems. So the work done on an object by a net force is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy. I don't like teaching you in this way because I'm not proving this to you. But just accept my word from it. It's true. It works. So it lands up in symbol form. It's like this. Delta EK is equal to the net work done. Right? <clears throat> so what happens if there's no change in kinetic energy? Well, then there's no work done. Right? There's no work done. There's no net work done. You can't say there's no work done. There's no net work done. So let's think about this business when I'm lifting an object, okay? So I'm lifting the tennis ball. <clears throat> if I'm lifting the tennis ball at a constant velocity, I'm lifting it, constant velocity, am I doing work on the tennis ball? I'm lifting the tennis ball at constant velocity. Am I doing work on the tennis ball? Go back, forget about friction. Go back to the definition of work. What's the definition of work? Okay, so is there, is there for, no, it didn't say product of the resultant force. I didn't ask you for net work, I asked the definition of work. You said it's the product of the force applied and the direction moved. Am I applying a force to this ball? Is it moving in the direction of that force? So is there work done on the ball by that force? Yes. Okay. I didn't say the resultant work. Hang on. I didn't say the resultant work. I said, am I doing work on the ball? If I'm moving it using a force a certain distance, if the, F, if the force is not zero and the distance in the direction that force is not zero, then I am doing work on it. Because you can multiply those two and get a big, uh, value bigger than all. Should I throw this ball in? 
Okay, you were going to say? It said that when the work is done at right angles, the... The work is zero. Yes. Now, that would be the case oh, if no. I was doing this. If I was walking this way. So the direction I'm moving it is that way, but the force I'm exerting is this way. They're at 90 degrees. I'm not doing any work on it, technically. But if I'm moving it this way, the force I'm exerting is up. The direction it's moving is up. I am doing work on it. Okay, I don't want to go back, go to friction now. I'm just exerting a force on it and moving it in the direction of that force. So I'm doing work. The angle between the force and the displacement is zero. So the cause of the angle is one. So it's going to be work is going to be force times distance. If I'm exerting two newtons force over two meters, two times two is four joules. I'm doing four joules of work. Okay. Now, there's a difference between am I doing work on the force, uh, the work on the ball? And is gravity doing work on the ball? Now watch. If I let the ball fall like this, still touching my hand, what's making it fall? Gravity. Would you say gravity is pulling my hand and the ball down? Am I allowing gravity to pull my hand and the ball down? Is gravity pulling my hand and the ball down? Yes. yes. So is gravity moving the ball in the direction of the gravitational force? Yes. yes. So is gravity doing work on the ball? Yes. Now, watch here. Moving slower. Now, uh, Mr. Pillay, you're not watching me. No, you were looking at your screen. Is gravity doing work on the ball? Yes. Yes. Now, is my hand doing work on the ball? Yes, because I'm slowing down the work of gravity. Okay, so there is work being done by two forces because there's two forces on the ball acting in the direction it's moving. All right, you guys are struggling to stay awake. So you should th start throwing the ball around. Um, I know it's after lunch. I know life is tough, but you got to try and stay awake. Smack your face, or I don't know, come. Splash some water on your face. Right. Now, there's such a thing as a conservative force and there's a non-conservative force. And you've got to get your head around it. A conservative force is a force where at any point during the, the motion of the object, um, sorry, where, the, where the, the work done by the force is not equal to, does not depend on the path taken. Right. There's only one conservative force that you ever deal with. And the conservative force that you guys deal with is gravity. It's the only one we know. So, put it this way. If I lift this ball from here to here, I've just shown you earlier on, you can work out the amount of work or the, the energy gained. And the work done is equal to the energy gained. Right? Does it matter if I do it straight like that or if I do it like this? Reach the same point. Reach the same point. To work out the potential energy, you just take starting point and final point. To work out the work done, you use the displacement, which is starting point and final point. So it makes no difference to the amount of work done. If you go this way, or if you lift it straight up. And that's because gravity is a conservative force. So the amount of work done doesn't depend on the path taken, only depends on starting and final point. Starting and final point. Um, so that's the definition of uh, conservative force. Um, in this case, with gravity, the mechanical energy is equal to potential energy before it began to fall. So the mechanical energy um, at the top is equal to the potential, the kinetic at the bottom. And so we said the change in mechanical energy is zero. With non-conservative forces, all right, um, if there are non-conservative forces present, i.e. friction, then there will be a loss in potential energy, but that will be equal to the work done by friction. Okay, I know this is very theoretical at the moment. We'll try and do a, an example and see if it makes a little bit more sense when we do a real example. So we get the con concept of network. Now, what is network? Network is the sum of all the works done by all the different forces acting on an object. So, 
I got a tennis ball. I left it with my hand against gravity. We've already discussed it. Does my hand do work on the ball? Does gravity do work on the ball? Now, network is the sum of those two works. If you add the work done by my hand against the work done by gravity, you get the network done. If I'm moving it with constant velocity, the network is zero. Because the work done by my hand will be equal to the work done by gravity. But they'll be opposite, they'll be negative. And that's where the, the, kinetic energy, um, the work energy theorem comes from. Because if the change in kinetic energy is zero, if it moves with constant velocity, the network done is zero. If I accelerate it up, the work done by my hand is bigger than the work done by gravity. So the network will not be zero, and that's why there's a change in kinetic energy. Question? No. But um, you will do force diagrams, not vector diagrams. I know. So, no, no, I understand it makes no sense. It's because it's very theoretical at this point. We'll do a couple of examples and have a look. I know. So, listen, try and focus. You've been reading the textbook while I'm talking. Focus on one. I know you're trying. Focus on one. It'll be easier, I promise. So let's have a look at this example. It is hot, I know. A 40 kilogram rocket is propelled up with a constant force of 680 newtons for 80 meters from the surface of the Earth. Ignoring, ignoring air resistance. I'm going to try and open this so you get more air in here. Sorry? No. Okay, well, just go to this one. Just go to this one. So here we've got an example. Rocket moving up. Rocket moving up. Let's try and work out these values. Okay. Now I've told you enough so that you should be able to work these out, but you probably won't be able to do it because it was all theory. Let's see see how we do it in practice. Say again. Doesn't matter. Just go to this one. We're going to work from here. We might come back to them. They might be just in a slightly different order. How are we going to do the first one? How do you work out the work done on the object by the 680 Newton force? Any suggestions? Yes. No, I don't want the work done by gravity. I want the work done by the 680 Newton force. Hang on. Multiply. Multiply what by the displacement? Okay, so you tell me I multiply 680 Newtons by 80 meters. No, no. Why do I have to do anything else? The work done by the 680 Newton force. There's my formula for work. Force times delta x times cos theta. If the object is moving up in the same direction as that force, and it sounds like it is, because the 680 Newton force is pushing the rocket up, then cos theta is 1, because it's cos of naught. The displacement is 80, and the force is 680 Newtons. So the... 680 Newton force is doing 54,400 joules of work. No, that's not cos of 90. Because the angle is an angle between the displacement and the force. Okay? Now, if, if the 680 Newton force is pushing it up, then the force and the displacement are up. You agree? Oh, okay. So, so the angle between them is zero. Oh, the angle between the force is not. Yes. It's the angle between the force and the direction in which the object's moving. So, are you happy with that first one? Yeah? Have you written it down? Now, obviously, where did I get the 680 Newtons from? Um, that was given to us, yeah? And where did I get the 80 from? That was given to us. Okay, let's try the next one. What's the work done on the object by the gravitational force? Mg times h. 
What's the gravitational force? Mass times gravity. What's the distance in which it moves? 80 meters. What's the work formula? Well, it's we know that's the force of gravity. It's going to be 392 newtons because it's a 40 kilogram rocket. We know that the um, so the formula I'm using here is I've called it WG. What's that? The work done by gravity. That gives you the the. And no, it's not wrong. It does give you the right answer. We just got to know why it's right. It's right because it's it's force times delta x times cos theta, which is your definition of work. But we know that the force of gravity we just worked out is 392 newtons. We know that the distance we're talking about is 80 meters, straight up. Now I've said cos 180. Why have I said cos 180? The object is moving up. Which way is gravity? Down. So the angle between the displacement and the force that we're talking about is 180 degrees. Now what's um, cos of 180? Minus 1. So now we get a negative value of minus 31,360 joules of energy. Now we don't say downwards because it's not a vector. Alright? You must put in that minus. You, it's not a vector. So we don't say down, but the minus is actually talking about direction. It's, well, it's kind of talking about direction. It's, it's not actually direction, because what it's doing, it's doing negative work. Let's think about this. If gravity wasn't there, would the thing have accelerated faster? Yes. So gravity is actually reducing the object's kinetic energy. So it's negative work. It's reducing the object's energy. It's fighting against it. See? No, because it, it's kind of like a direction, but it's not really direction. We don't say it's um, work done in the opposite direction. We're just saying it's work done against the other force. Yes. Okay. So, are you happy with how we've worked that out? All right. Now, since this force is bigger than the, gra the gravitational force, what can you tell me about the motion of this object? It's going to be accelerating. Is its kinetic energy going to be increasing or decreasing or staying the same? Increasing. So, next question, what's the net work done? Now, there's two ways of doing it. You can add them together. Okay? You can add those two works. Add those two together and see what you get. Or, you can calculate the work using the work formula, but instead of using just F, you use the net force. So we'll do both. So you can first say, okay, net work is equal to the work, all the works added up. Work of friction plus the work of, sorry, work not of friction, the work of the force plus the work of gravity. Add them up. The one's negative, so it works out to be that many joules. That's just adding up the works. I hope I've done it the other way as well. No, I haven't done it the other way yet. You can also do it if you work out the net force. If net, yeah. Um, and you get the same answer. But we'll just leave it for there for now. What time does this lesson end? Now. Alright. We're going to leave it there, guys.